Okay, so by request, I'm going to demonstrate how I would sketch a rational function that is cubic over quadratic, which means it's going to have an oblique asymptote. Now, I designed this question specifically so that I can show all the different, um, I guess, key features that could pop up in an example such as this. Um, and not all questions are going to be lined up nicely like this, but I just wanted to do this so that you would know you know, what you're supposed to do and what you are trying to look for as you're doing your best to sketch this, okay? So the numerator is going to be cubic and I would like to see if I can in fact factor it, okay? So uh, I know what one of the factors are. One of the roots is going to be uh, positive two. So I'm gonna test it. So two, two cubed minus nine, two squared plus seven times two plus a six. This is going to be 2, 4, 8, 16, minus 2, 4, negative 36. That's a 14 plus a 6, and that equals a 0. So I'm going to go ahead, using synthetic, uh, put a 2 here, 2, negative 9, 7, 6, drop it down, multiply, add, multiply, add, and multiply, and that's a 0. Therefore, the numerator is going to be x minus 2, 2x squared minus 5x minus a 3. So let me sort of, let me continue on with the factoring and then I'm going to replace the numerator, uh, the function up above at the end. Okay. Uh, I also noticed that now I have a quadratic and that looks factorable. Let's see. Um, 2x times x squared, do, 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 I need a negative 9, so that's going to be a negative 3, that's going to be a plus 1, because yes, good. So this is my numerator, so this cubic is now this, and my denominator is x, x minus 5 plus 2. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, OK, so that's it. Let's start with identifying some key features. So domain, in this case, x could be any, any real number, but we can't have a negative 2, nor can we have a positive 5. And since they are not going to be holes, these are going to end up being our vertical asymptotes. Let's move on to the intercepts. Uh, what would the y-intercept be when x equals 0? 0, 0, 0, the num numerator is 6. 0, 0, the denominator is a negative 10. That's going to be, well, for the sake of uh, graphing, I'm going to write it as negative 0 0.6 as a decimal. Also, when will the entire function be a 0 to calculate x-intercepts? Well, any time the numerator is a 0, which means x can be a 2, a negative 1 over 2, or a positive 3. If you sort of like it in terms of, you know, points, just write it that way and keep these points in mind because you're going to need it for sketching. All right, so DIA asymptotes are next. Um, asymptotes, asymptotes, vertical asymptote, as I mentioned before, x is going to be at negative 2 as well as a 5. In this case, there are no horizontal asymptotes. We're going to go straight into oblique asymptote. How do we do that? Well, we're going to divide this to see what the, I guess, overall equation would actually be along with the remainder. Now, I would love to do synthetic, but this particular denominator is a quadratic. So synthetic is only for linear binomials. I am going to have to do long division, unfortunately. Okay. Just cross your fingers and hope that I never give you a denominator that's a quadratic so that you don't have to do long division. But even if I do give it, hey, don't shy away from it. Be confident knowing that you can. Uh, let's see. What do I have to multiply to get to 2x cubed? Well, it'll be 2x. So 2x cubed minus 3 times 2, that's negative 6x squared, minus 10 times 2, that's negative 20x. And when I subtract, I get 
negative 3x squared plus 27x plus 6 comes down. And so I need negative 3. Negative 3x squared plus 9x plus 30. And if I subtract it, my remainder is 18x minus 24. So putting all that together, f of x can be rewritten as a linear function, 2x plus 3, with a little remainder. And the denominator is x squared minus 3x minus 10. Okay, so by end behavior, you can say that as x approaches infinity, what do we have? f of x is going to be 2x minus 3. Uh, and then this will be a large infinity divided by a larger infinity. In other words, you're going to be adding by a very, very, very small number. Not just, you know, for the sake of argument, let's just do that. Which means my end behavior will be exactly like 2x minus 3 plus a little bit. Another way they say that is I'm going to be resting just above the line that is 2x minus 3. At the same way, as x approaches a negative infinity, f of x would be 2x minus 3 plus a negative infinity, right, or a negative large number divided by a positive larger number. Now, that is so mathematically not acceptable, but I think you get the point. It is going to be subtraction of a very, very, very small number. It's going to be a subtraction of a 0, 0.00000. You get the point. The end behavior is going to be this 2x minus 3 line, but actually just shy of whatever that value will be. It'll be a little bit smaller than that. Okay. Lastly, this is a big one. Our final step is to do the chart. And of course, um, some, some classes apparently don't do the chart method, but I highly recommend it because it's such a common and such a useful thing, I think, in calculus, at least for my studies. So let's put all of our vertical asymptotes and all of our x-intercepts in this chart. My vertical asymptotes are negative 2 and 5, and these are my x-intercepts. So in chronological or ascending order, negative 2, then negative half, and then 2, and then 3, and then 5. Whew. On the right column, on the left column, sorry, I'm going to put in every single, I guess, term that has the ability to become a negative. In other words, every bracket you see here. Okay. Uh, choosing a number ne less than negative two. So let's pretend it's like a negative five. That's going to be a negative. That will be a negative. That's a negative. That's a negative. That's a negative. The overall function is going to be a negative value. Great. Negative two is my vertical asymptote. So remind myself that. A number between these two, I'm going to try a negative one. Negative one minus two is a negative. Negative one times two plus one, that's a negative. Negative one, negative. That's a positive. That's a negative. Okay. When x equals negative half, my y value is a zero. In between these two, oh, easy. I'm going to try a zero. Zero minus two, zero plus one. 0 minus 3, 0 plus 2, 0 minus 3. That's going to be a negative. 2 is also a 0. Between 2 and 3, I'm going to do 2.5. That's a positive, positive, negative, positive, negative. It's going to be a positive. And then at the 3 is another 0. And then between 3 and 5, I'll do a 4. That's a positive, positive, positive positive and negative. And the five is a vertical asymptote. And we've got everything is going to be positive. Wow, we've come a long way. Let's sketch. I need some space. 
So again, uh, from the request given in the email, I don't really know where the main difficulty is. So um, please feel free to either, you can specify by sending me another email. You can also comment, I suppose, on the, on the video or whatever you really want to do. But let's go. What do we know? The vertical asymptote is negative two with negative five, oh, sorry, positive five, excuse me. It's a negative two, that's a positive five. My x-intercepts are two, three, and negative half. That's a lot. Um, what else? Oblique asymptote, two x minus three. So let me use a different color. Minus three will be around here. And my slope is a two, so one, two, one, one, two, one. So it's gonna look something like this. The point where the red line intersects the x-axis is gonna be like a 1.5. Oh, that was terrible. Okay, let me extend my vertical asymptotes just to make this picture a little bit nicer. Okay. All right, let's do this. And the last thing that would help me, last two things are my behavior near vertical asymptotes, which is here and here, as well as my end behavior along the oblique. So we have, let's see, to the right, to the left of my negative two, it's going to be a negative. So it'll be right here. And then to the right of my vertical asymptote here, it's gonna be positive, it's sort of teleporting there. At five, to the left of thing will be down here. And to the right, it would be up here. Okay, and, and behavior. As X approaches infinity, I am gonna be above my red line. Let me erase this a little bit. So nothing actually distracts you. This is my red line and my oblique asymptote, and I'm supposed to finish here. Uh, as I go to negative infinity, I should be underneath the oblique asymptote. Okay, so think about this, okay? So this is gonna be interesting. I need to start from this bottom left corner arrow and I have to approach my vertical asymptote in this manner, like that. And then from here, I need to cross this. I need to cross my y-intercept, I forgot, right here, negative 0 0.6. I need to hit this, and I need to hit this before I go back downwards. That's what my math tells me. Once again, I need to start from up here. I need to cross this. I need to cross the y-intercept. I need to cross this x-intercept and cross that x-intercept before I approach a negative infinity. Go back to your the graph, uh, the function that we had, and notice that they were all order one. So this line right here is gonna cross my x-axis as it was, as if it was an order one. Okay, so it's gonna hit my y intercept and it has to hit that and hit that and before coming back down. That's what my math is telling me. You might think, hey, but we're crossing the oblique asymptote. You have to get, your, get out of your mind the concept that horizontal and oblique cannot be um, crossed. Horizontal and oblique simply tell you what the end behavior of the graph is going to be. It has nothing to do with how it's going to behave locally. They are two completely separate things. Trust your math. And the math says that there are three x-intercepts with the y-intercept you have to cross, starting from here and finishing here. So do it. And when you've completed it, this is going to be your overall curve. I know it might look a little bit funny, but 
I'm going to try to pull out Desmos for you here, desmos.com. And then while that's going, let me share my screen to that. I hope you can see it. I'm going to plug in what we had before. So 2x to the power of 3 minus 9x to the power of 2 plus 7x plus 6. 7x plus 6. All of that divided by x to the power of 2 minus 3x minus 10. There you go. Does that look familiar? So this was the part where I told you that I had an x-intercept, a y-intercept, an x-intercept, and an x-intercept that had to fall through, uh, that had to be weaved together, even though there was an oblique asymptote going right through it. So end behavior, going down to the vertical asymptote, teleports up, goes three, goes through these one, two, three, four points, goes back to negative infinity, teleports back up, and then has an end behavior following 2x minus 3. I know it was pretty extensive, um, but get comfortable with it. You can do it. There's nothing in our calculations that was necessarily new. It was simply long. And that I recognize, and that you have my sympathies, but I'm not going to say this is difficult. It's just long. So keep practicing. I know you can do it. And uh, yeah, reach out if there are any other questions you have.